Hello everyone. So now uh, in today's session, we'll see uh, introduction to data analysis and data types. So once after understanding the importance of analytics across business domains, okay, let's see what is data analysis and how this is different than data analytics. So this data analysis and data analytics terminology sounds similar, but there is a thin difference between data analysis and data, data analytics that we are going to highlight in this session. So in this ses session, we'll uh, gain answers to what is data analysis, we'll see its definition, process, difference between data analysis and data analytics, and then we'll see different types of data. So first we'll understand what is data, what is the basis of categorization for data, and what are the different data types. So this is data analysis introduction. So when I say analysis, this is nothing but referring to breaking a whole into its separate components for individual examination. So data analysis is a process of process for obtaining raw data and converting it into information useful for decision making by users. So data is collected and analyzed to answer questions, test hypotheses or disprove theories. So when I say data analysis, it's basically uh, the data that you have stored in your data warehouses or data marts which are the historical repositories of the data understanding the pattern of the data uh, you can use that data to plot some trend analysis uh, identify the behavior you know from that particular data and then come with some conclusion that this is how my customer performance was this is how my product performed in past and you can you can definitely you know i mean take that information as an input to improve or to enhance your business uh, revenue or profit. So th there are various statisticians and people who provide a definition for data analysis. So according to a statistician, John Turkey, who was born in 1915, who defined data analysis was something like this. So this is, this is nothing but procedures for analyzing data techniques, for interpreting the results of such procedures, ways of planning the gathering of data, to make its analysis easier, more precise or more accurate and all the machinery and results of mathematical statistics which apply to analyzing data. So you'll find many definitions of data analysis. This was one given by this st statistician. So there are various components of data analysis. So we have uh, something called as uh, process. So there are several process processes that can be distinguished and these phases are iterative in the feedback from later phases may result in additional work in the earlier phases. So this is a cyclic process which starts with some particular process and then ends with some particular process and if the pre prior processes are not up to the mark then you need to go back and perform those cleansing and you know you need to correct those, those steps and you know get the data at, at the desired level before you continue with the further processes. So there are various steps involved in this. So step one is define your questions and then step two is set clear measurement priorities and then you have this collecting data and then you have this interpreting results and then we have this uh, analyzing data and then comes the data cleaning. So we'll see how these steps are performed one after the other and how we arrive you know, at some, at some clean data that is used in your analysis or the analytics that you're performing in this uh, data scientist domain. So when I say data analysis, Analysis looks backwards over time, providing marketers with a historical view of what has happened. So as I told you before, uh, this helps you understanding your past business data, your product data or your customer data and then you know you can draw some conclusion from that you know past information, that historical information when you predict something for future. Whereas when I say data analytics, this analytics looks forward to model the future or predict a result. For example, we can take the same uh, uh, shopping mall example where if a customer visits repeatedly and every time if he buy a you know item of a particular type and if his information is stored in that you know shopping malls uh, OLTP uh, systems, that shopping mall can analyze that particular customer's data and and can 
come up with some promotional schemes or offers you know some lucrative offers which he, you know they can give to that particular customer to you know push him you know for some some items that he hasn't bought yet okay that he never bought in 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 you know past and you know they can that way they can enhance their revenue or profit so when you understand the customer behavior pattern and with that when you start predicting for future that is called as data analytics so both analysis and analytics provide the insight marketers use to value customers accurately so these are some similarities between data analysis and data analytics so they help you value customers accurately target the right audience so you can in case if you have lots of data stored you can actually figure it out you know who all are the uh, customers whom you can target and who all are the customers who were like one time buyers and you know they'll they'll not you know come or visit your outlet again and you can discard their data and focus mostly on the ones who are who can be your potential buyer again this helps you improve the effectiveness of their marketing budget so both help marketers transform customer data by exploring and analyzing that data to help uncover unknown patterns opportunities insights that can drive proactive and evidence based decision making so these are some similarities between uh, data analysis and data analytics uh again there are various ways we can we can define data so when you define data this data is nothing but set of values of qualitative or quantitative type so data is set of values of qualitative or quantitative variables so these are the broad broad categories of data so the data which is in textual format which is in descriptive format is mostly your qualitative data and the data that you can measure in 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 terms of numbers is your quantitative data so the qualitative data is descriptive in nature it describes an attribute that can be observed but not measured for example the flavors of ice cream which can be vanilla or butterscotch or chocolate or uh, the hair color which can be blonde or brunette or black or the profession type that can be engineer or or tailor or consultant okay these things can only be observed these things can only be felt this cannot be measured such data is called as qualitative data but in in some other cases you know you have some data that can be measured in 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 terms of numbers that is called as your quantitative data so this data is numeric in in measure it captures the measure of an attribute for example height of students which can be uh, approximately say 5 5 ft 6 inches or you know 5 5 ft 9 inches or 5 ft 3 inches or 5 ft 5 inches okay so all these numbers can be measured or the cost of a particular item which can be you know 120.5 or 130.2 or 111.6 or 90.8 or you know age of a person which can be 34 or 26 or 67 or 53 so as you see all these data can be measured but in case of qualitative that this data can only be observed or it can be only experience it cannot be measured this is how we segregate we uh, classify data in in qualitative and the quantitative quantitative type which are the two broad categories of data so there are some factors on on the basis of which we do data categorization so it's the type of the data the processing of the data the form of the data the source of you know data generation size so there are various factors which help you in in data categorization for example when i say types of data again as as we discussed in previous slide we can categorize the data as the qualitative or quantitative this qualitative data at times is also called as categorical data so we have different types of variables in this categorical category for example this binary and nominal and ordinal and ratio and interval all these are different types of variables that that comes under this categorical category you are going to uh, learn more about these variables in your data science module then we have this quantitative random variables which can be classified as discrete or continuous okay so we have discrete numbers and we have continuous numbers uh, numbers okay which defines your qualitative random variable data so when i say discrete data this is some numerical data which has finite number of possible values examples number of people in a room number of items in a basket number of hours in a day okay all this data represent some numerical data which is discrete in nature then we have this continuous data which is again numerical data and this will have infinite number of possible values for example height of 
people you know weight of people or sales you know made in a in a in an organization or the account balance that you have all this data is is again numerical but this data is continuous in nature so continuous data is usually in in decimals now there are various data types in in quantitative category so these are few examples of quantitative data types and we have classified them in in terms of the measuring or unit and the attribute whether they are you know discrete or continuous so for example you have this fuel in car you know which can be empty or full so this can be categorized as the discrete data if you want its equivalent continuous form this can be like fuel volumes in liters or gallons but when you describe it only as you know empty or full this this we call as discrete but when you start defining in terms of uh, the liters and the gallons then this is called as continuous then we have this height of trees in a forest which which could be ta tall or medium or short but when you start measuring it in terms of meters or centimeters then you call this as continuous data but when you describe only as as tall or medium or short we call is call this as discrete data or it can be the performance of a tailor in in a garment factory which could be poor or average or good this is the discrete uh, category of the data when you want its equivalent continuous category this could be the pieces stretched or the number of hours worked in the factory or it could be uh, the next example could be home deliveries of pizzas so in case if you want to describe in in the form of discrete data this could be the number of late deliveries or number of you know deliveries you know which were on time uh, in terms of continuous this could be the time per delivery in terms of student performance the various grades that are allocated or that are assigned to students you know describe the discrete nature of the data and the percentage marks scored by the students is nothing but the continuous data so here we had few examples uh, explaining us the difference between the discrete and the continuous form of the data then we classify data based on the kind of processing which is required on the data most of the time your transactional systems capture your data in in raw format and this data has to be converted into a into a structured format so that that data can be easily you know analyzed or the data can be used for any kind of analytics so what it means is the data from the source input to the data processing process raw data may have errors uh, not validated okay same data can be repeated several times it it can have you know some some un undefined format or it can be dubious or requiring confirmation or you know citation on so your raw data could be in any of these forms which definitely needs cleansing uh, a good cleansing and you know then only this data you know when used in analytics and you know generate some result you will be able to draw some meaningful inferences from the result for example if the correct format is not specified in an application form the date of birth data can take many forms such as i mean it can be written as 31st january 1990 or 31st slash 01 or 31st slash 190 or 31st jan 90 this raw data needs to be processed to a common format for further use by you know systems or humans uh, there are some words or i mean uh, some keywords that we you know refer by its its many forms for example if you are referring to uh, let's say a country usa that can be referred you know as u.s.a or simply usa or u.s. or us if if you are not able to uh, standardize this data then these four occurrences of usa u.s.a usa u.s. and us will be considered as four different countries but you know that all these keywords are representing the same country so you need some some mean or way to you know cleanse the data and tell the end user that all these tell your application that all these occurrences of usa are representing the same country so you have to have some some mechanism to standardize these values and you know some mechanism to cleanse this data only then you know doing some analysis on this data will make sense when you say processed data when you define processed data what it means data after processing for issues in the raw data uh, this is some data which is ready for analysis i mean one can easily consume this data for any kind of analytics or model or algorithm that you want to run on uh, processing includes scrubbing cleansing merging formatting transforming and so on all data processing steps documented for example when i say recoding okay number of children filled in a survey form may be left blank by people who don't have children this have to be coded as zero which is a valid value for this variable 
but if it is left blank that that may create some chaos or issues when you are using that information for some analysis when you say deriving this is end of day sale amount for a store which can be calculated by summing up all the transactions in a day then we do the categorization based uh, on data collection type so data can be categorized as as i mean categorized in different uh, uh, types so you have this uh, there is something called as main types and there are other types so under this main types we have this data you know gathered or collected from census or the uh, data capturing systems or the observational study or the convenience sample or the randomized trial you know that you have when i say other types that includes the prediction study the studies over time the retrospective you know form of the data the cross sectional and the longitudinal data so we'll see the different data collection types and uh, what it means so the first type is the census data which is the systematic collection of data about all members of population then we have this observational study this is the collection of data to draw inference of outcome of a treatment on subjects it is not in control of the investigator to assign the subjects either to the test or the control groups then we have this convenience sample which is collection of data from a sample where the subjects are selected because of their convenient accessibility and proximity to the researcher then we have this randomized trial which is collection of data to draw inference of outcome of a treatment on subjects the investigator randomly allocates the subjects to either the test or the control group we are going to see uh, these topics more in detail when you'll start actual uh, predictive modeling so you'll be covering this under data science and then you'll see its practical implementation under the predictive modeling that you can do either in sas or r or python like tools then we have this predictive study data which is train where we have this training data and testing data so training data is nothing but a set of data that is used for discovering potential relationships and the testing data is set of data that is used for assessing the strength and robustness of a predictive relationship then we have data which is collected uh, uh, by studies over time which can be the cross sectional or the longitudinal data in cross sectional we have data collected by observing many subjects at the same time snapshot view of the uh, subjects or cross section of the population then we have this longitudinal data which is data collected on repeated observation of the same set of variables over a period of time then we have this retrospective data which is collection of data of events that have already occurred in past then after we have this time series data which is a sequence of data points measured typically at successive points in times spaced at uniform time intervals for example the data that you have collected every year or every quarter or at the end of every day so you can decide that pattern of the data frequency and you can classify that as time series data so this is one dimensional data and has a natural uh, temporal ordering so there is some particular order which is followed so it could be the day wise or it could be the week wise or the month wise or the year wise uh, i mean whichever standard you have followed i mean data is measured you know based on that standard then you have the spatial data which is the data that have a spatial or geographical component which means they have a location on earth so there is some location or some some physical you know path of that particular data then we have this cross section data which is which refers to the data collected by observing many subjects such as individuals organizations or countries or regions at the same time and this we define as cross section data and this data is one dimensional in in nature then we have this panel data so panel data contains observations of multiple phenomena obtained over multiple time periods for the same organizations or individuals then comes the forms of the data so as we discussed at the beginning of the session most of the time in your production environment the data comes in in different formats i mean the data uh, can come in in the structured form or the unstructured form or the semi structured form and before you start analyzing the data you have to ensure that the data is properly cleansed and then only it is used as input for the analysis so here we'll see we'll describe different forms of the data the first is the structured data this is some data that can be organized in well defined structures 
structures include arrays or vectors or tables or you know other data repository formats. There exists some relationships uh, between the different entities that you have in, in the structured data. So relationships in data defined within the structure. For example, we can, we can consider the student data given here as you know the structured data where we have variables like id and then we have the first name and we have last name and then we have date of joining and batch number and course name and address 1, address 2 and, and the city you know as the variable names. So as you see you have some column header, some variable name which is describing the structure and then you have you know some data maintained under it. Uh, in terms of structured data, the data that we maintain, that we store in, in almost all RDBMSs, the relational database management systems, that data we call as structured data. So the data that you have stored in, in the Oracle database or the MySQL database or the MSSQL database or the Sybase database is considered as a structured data because that data has a well defined format and you know the data is stored or maintained under that particular format. When I say semi-structured data, semi-structured data does not conform to a formal def defined structure but entities belongs to classes with attributes. Data cannot be processed as efficiently as the structured data. For example, the data that you have captured or that you have stored in the HTML or the XML format where every information is stored in the form of tags is considered as a semi-structured data. So this is not something that, that is absolutely now in a very you know, uh, uh, you know, unknown format. Here the format of the data is known, the flow of the data is known, but again this data cannot be considered as good as the structured data, the data that you have stored in the tabular format or in, you know, various RDBMSs. Then we have this unstructured category of data, which is some raw data that you have captured, you know, through the web applications or that you have captured through the handheld devices which are configured, you know, across organizations or the data that you have captured, you know, uh, from the social media sites that you have, it could be your WhatsApp data, Twitter data, you know, the Facebook data, okay, the data which has no particular format. So this data cannot be considered as semi-structured or structured, this data comes under uh, the category of unstructured. So in this case, the data is organized in an arbitrary manner with no predefined structure. The types of content includes the free text, documents, images and videos. Example, the resume document of a student with free text and images or the data that you have captured or that you have gathered from the social media sites or you know various applications, you know mobile apps or the web apps that you have. This data comes under unstructured category and this data has to be converted into a structured format before you start analyzing this data in a meaningful manner. Then we have uh, something called as batch data and the real time data. This is something which is related to uh, two processes that we perform most of the time in production environment called as real time processing and batch processing. So there are some processes which when uh, occur they need to be immediately updated in your database or in your you know data repository systems. For example when a particular customer uh, withdraws money from ATM this transaction needs to be immediately recorded in the bank's database and the balance of that particular customer you know needs to reduce accordingly. If this transaction is delayed you know for a while then that customer you know may withdraw the money you know several times you know because his, his balance has not reduced. So this transaction has to be reflected in the bank's database immediately. The balance should go down and then you know accordingly you know the further transaction should be allowed or they should not be allowed. But there are certain uh, transactions, there are some processes that we can delay and we can perform in batch. For example, when it comes to sending monthly statements to customers for their transactions that they perform throughout the month, you know, this activity can be performed only once in a month, maybe at the end of the month or, you know, at the beginning of the month. Okay, this need not be, you know, performed every day. The customer need not be sent, you know, a statement every day for their transactions. Okay, this could be done once in a month or, you know, some frequency which is which has been decided by the financial institution. In unstructured and structured data category, we mostly perform two types of processing and accordingly we uh, I mean, categorize the data as the batch data and the real time data. So basically, uh, whenever you perform any kind of processing in your uh, business environment, it, it's classified, uh, classified as real time uh, processing and the batch processing. So when I say real time processing, it's basically some processing that needs to be immediately recorded in your data capturing systems. Only then uh, the data integrity is maintained. 
but batch processing is something which can be delayed and you know it is performed at some specific interval for example when a customer uh, you know withdraws money from atm this particular processing or transaction needs to be needs to be immediately recorded in the bank's database and accordingly the balance amount of the customer must you know reduce if it is not immediately captured and reflected in the database then that balance will show you know as as the previous balance and the customer you know may withdraw that money you know several times so this transaction needs to be reflected immediately in the database but when it comes to sending monthly statements you know to uh, cu customers in a bank okay they need not go for i mean they need not make this as their daily activity uh, whereas what they can do they can uh, send this uh, statements you know once in in a month maybe at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month so this particular activity can be pushed or can be uh, performed in in bulk or in in batch size you know at some particular specific interval but this is not possible when you perform some real time transaction like you know withdrawing money from atm or you know when uh, you know a customer you know shift uh, changes the address from one location to the other okay this needs to be immediately ref reflected in the bank's database so when i say batch data this is some data collected in a batch mode at periodic intervals so there is a delay in the availability of data as a certain periodicity is maintained for its collection whereas in real time data data is collected in real time the data is delivered as it gets generated there is no delay in timeliness of data provided in case if there is a delay this will uh, impact the accuracy of the data or the transactions and you know because of which the data integrity will go down so that's the difference between batch data and the real time data okay based on uh, uh, the two types of processing that we perform in in the production environment batch processing and real time processing thank you very much